Chapter Twelve. Can we share? Priya, remember how we studied multiplication earlier? Now we will study the opposite of multiplication: division. Division is the opposite of multiplication. So you mean division is subtracting groups a number of times? Yes, exactly, Priya. That's a pretty good guess. Let's see this example. How many balls do we have here? Let's count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight balls here. Let's put them in four groups. So I take one ball and place it here. I'll take another one and place it this side, and I'll take the third here and put it over here, and the fourth ball I'll put one over here. So now I take another ball from the top and place it in the first group. Now I'm going to take this one to the second group, and I'll take another one here into the third group. And this one over here, the last one, goes into the fourth group. So we have divided these eight balls into four equal groups, right? So how many balls are there now in each group? We have two balls in each group. So eight balls were divided into four groups, and each group now has two balls. So if we write this as a problem, it would be eight. Divided by four equals two. Let's try one more. Let's say you had eighteen candies, and you had to divide those candies and give them to three friends because you love sharing, because that shows that you care. So, how many candies would each friend get? So here you're dividing eighteen by three. Because you have three friends and you want three different groups, so after dividing, we see that each group has six candies. So the problem here can be written as eighteen divided by three equals six. So the three friends of yours would get six candies each. So let's try doing something different. Let's show division on the number line. Let's do the problem eight divided by four. Since division is repeated subtraction, starting from eight, we will be jumping four steps back down the number line till we reach zero. Let's begin. So that's one jump. Here's the second jump. So our answer for eight divided by four equals two, because we jumped back two times. Now let's show the problem eighteen divided by three on the number line. So when we were dividing these candies before, we were subtracting three candies each time, starting from the number eighteen. Let's jump back three numbers each time until we reach zero. So are you ready? Let's go. So this is the first jump, second jump. Third jump, fourth jump, fifth jump, and sixth jump. So there are six jumps. So eighteen divided by three equals six. Now let's try a tricky one over here. Here are sixteen footprints. How many kids do you think we have over here? Now we know that a pair belongs to one child. So we can divide sixteen by two, which is eight. Or we can also do it another way. Remember, division is the opposite of multiplication. So, for example, if sixteen divided by two equals eight, then eight times two equals sixteen. That's right. Very interesting, isn't it? So we could have solved the same problem by mental multiplication. So, for example, how many twos would give you the number sixteen? Two times eight 
would give you 16. Let's try one more. Let's say you have 35 crayons to distribute among your five friends. So how many crayons would each get? That's five times blank equals 35. Well, if the answer that you got was seven, you were right. So when you divide 35 by five, which is five friends, you get seven. You wanna cross check that? All right, let's try it on the number line. So here's the number line. So from 35, we'll jump back five numbers each time up to zero. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. We took seven jumps. So 35 divided by five equals seven. Wow, math sure is a lot of fun, isn't it? If you keep on practicing, it just gets better and better. Well, until we meet next time, bye-bye for now.